A two-force member is any member that has forces applied at two distinct points on the member and no external moments applied. This is a very unique situation. However, this scenario actually ha happens often in analyzing statically determinate structures. A typical case is when a beam is connected by two pins at both ends. Take the figure given to us in problem 4-6 in your text. Member A, B, C has forces applied by the pin at A, forces applied by the pin at B, and an external force at C. Therefore, there are forces acting at three points along this beam. This member is not a two-force member. However, if we look at member DB, if we call D a pin connection and B a pin connection, this can be drawn as a two-force member. Isolating member DB, we can draw a free body diagram of this member with pin reactions at D and B. Our assumptions are that this is a 2D rigid body uh, problem in static equilibrium. To simplify my analysis here, I've put the x-axis acting along the member from D to B. You can see that there it appears to be 1, 2, 3, 4 forces FD, Y, FDX, FBY, and FBX acting on this. So how is this a three-force member? Well, recall that since they're both at a point, acting at only two points, these can be resolved into two forces. Force FB and force FD. Using equilibrium analysis to solve for these forces, I'll start with taking a moment about D. Taking the moments from the system about point D in the Z direction, we only have the force contributed from FBY causing a moment about D. So that can be written as the position vector from D to B times FBY for the magnitude, and recall this is in the positive Z hat direction from our right hand rule. What we find from this is that since this is the only force and the moment must be zero, that FBY, since R D to B cannot be zero, or is not zero, therefore FBY must equal zero. Using our next equilibrium equation as the sum of the forces on the system in the y, uh, we find that FDY plus FBY is equal to zero. However, since we just solved that FBY is equal to zero, we find that FDY must also be equal to zero. Finally, taking the sum of the forces in the x direction on the system, we have FDX plus FBY. So we find that FDX must be equal to the opposite of FBX.